What's up YouTube, what's going on guys? So part two of the weak point training series where we go over the squat, the bench press, and the deadlift and common problems I see people deal with in those movements and I show you how to fix them with uh, weak point exercises and technique changes. So today we're gonna be talking about uh, falling over in the squat, what causes that and how to fix it. Now if you didn't watch the first video, go watch that. It was uh, weakness off the bench press or off the chest in the bench press. Um, in that video I explain how I'm gonna give out this free routine at the end of the series so it's really important you guys follow along with every video because if you want to uh, use that routine in your training, you're gonna wanna have access and, and have watched all of these videos at the end of it. So let's get into it. Um, this video is pretty simplistic to understand once you understand a little bit of physics. Usually speaking, when someone is falling over in the squats, when they're, they come up out of that hole and their ass shoots back up and high and their knees kind of recede, what's causing that? Well, there's one of two things. One, it's either a technique issue and you just need to teach yourself to squat a little bit more upright, but that's almost never really the problem. Usually speaking, it's weak quads. Now I'm gonna show you why over here. Let me zoom my camera in. Now, just like last time, guys, we have a good demonstration side and a bad demonstration side of what's happening in the squat. But this time, we're gonna go a little bit deeper into explaining some physics behind the squat. I've already done a video on this before, so some of you may already know this, but for those of you who don't, this is basically what's happening. What you need to understand is when we get into the squat position, both in the good and bad position, you can, or the good and bad drawings, you can see the first picture looks exactly the same. And you can see the barbell is on their back, kind of in a low bar position. And, the, and this is, applies to high bar or, or low bar, but I'm just using low bar because most people use it for strength. Um, and you can see forces being distributed straight down to the ground. We already understand and know this. Now what you might not understand if you don't have a background in physics is basically, there's joints that need to produce torque or force to move this barbell back up. These joints in this movement are gonna be your hip joint and your knee joint. Basically, you have to put a lot of rotational force at these joints to move that barbell back up. Now, in this good and bad picture, you can see the first drawing is exactly the same. You reach that bottom position, most people can do this, with their knee slightly in front of the, uh, the line of force and their hips slightly behind. These pink, uh, drawings right here, the pink lines right there, basically demonstrate what we call a moment arm. I talked about this in the last video. Essentially, the longer this line is, the more demand or work that joint has to produce in order to move this barbell. So you can see here in the second drawing, when we come just up out of that hole of the squat, in the upright picture, that force or the demand stays equal both on the hip and the knee joint. In the, the second drawing, you can see here all of a sudden the knees recede and the hips kind of collapse over and your back increases the angle and now the demand on the hips is really high but on the knee joint it's really really small. Essentially the closer these joints are to that line of force that the barbell is putting onto the body, the easier job they have. So in the squat, the more that knee recedes back towards that line and the hips kind of increase the distance they have to move towards that line. Basically, you're taking tension away from the quads and placing it onto the hip extensors. Now, I hope that made sense, you guys. If it didn't, go watch my previous video. I'll link it in the description box. Um, I explained it a lot better. I already talked about falling over in the squat and uh, I explained the physics, I think, a little bit more in depth in that video. So if you're curious to, to learn a little bit more, go watch that video. But let's just get into how we fix this problem. This is something I dealt with big time when I first started lifting because I have very, very weak quads and long femurs. So it just makes it a hard job all around for my quads to do anything in a squat so I used to tip over a lot what did I do to fix it well just like last video we're gonna have our primary exercises and our secondary exercises the primary exercises are always going to be the main movements of the day that you do the secondary stuff's more your accessory work like the single joint type movements or, or things that aren't very close to our competition style squat now primary squatting or excuse me primary exercise for tipping over in the squat Front squat, literally the main thing I did to fix this was I just front squatted myself to death. There was a point I could barely squat or front squat 315 for a set of five. I actually have a video on Instagram where I fail really hard on the fifth rep or I almost fail and I get this weird tweak out of my body. Uh, and I took that and I somehow built up my front squat to a 455 front squat in a matter of a year and a half, I think, maybe a little bit longer, I can't remember. I just front squatted like crazy. Now the reason why this helps so much is not only are you training the hell out of the quads, you're also training the upper back muscles which can kind of play a small role in tipping over in the squat, 
but it's just a way to really annihilate the main muscles that just cause any kind of tippage in the squat. And it's something you can do pretty frequently. Most people, as long as you're not dealing with knee issues, can front squat no problem for tons of volume throughout the week. And it's, it's just so much easier on the body than doing a low bar back squat. So go ahead, fire away at the front squats. Um, I would honestly program those as low as even uh, single reps on them as long as your form's good. But in the beginning, a lot of volume, you know, sets of eight, sets of six, really just hammer away at, at growing your quads and getting them stronger. The next exercise is a mid pause squat. Now it doesn't matter if you do this with a front squat position, a high bar or a low bar squat position. You can really do this with anything, but what it does is basically when you come out of that hole and you pause about a quarter to halfway up, you're having to force yourself to be in the right position because if, if you're not, that bar's gonna tip right up off of your chest if you're doing a front squat or if you're doing a, a back squat, you're gonna see instantly that your hips are shooting back when you film yourself or you're just gonna feel it and you're gonna know you need to fix it. So it's a really cool way of kind of just doing your, your squatting uh, and, and forcing the stuff to, to move in the direction you need it to move to get those knee extensors to contribute to your squat and really maintain good position. I usually like a one to two second pause. Uh, you can also pair it with a, a double pause squat where you pause in the hole and then halfway up as well. So that's a really good exercise for fixing it. And then uh, last thing, the primary, tempo high bar squats. Sorry, I think my cat rubbed against this so you can't read it, but tempo high bar squats are fucking amazing for just annihilating the quads. Now the front squat, like I said, those thoracic muscles, the, the muscles in your mid upper back, they have to fight pretty hard to keep you upright too in a front squat. And so if you have just tremendously weak quads, uh, you might want to actually do a high bar squats and when you do them with a tempo and I recommend kind of a three second down One second pause and three second up. It just annihilates your quads like no one else's business You can get a lot of forward knee movement and really just uh, groove those those quads to contribute to your squatting movement pattern And you can do it really controlled or using a lighter weight and you just get kind of almost like a bodybuilder pump You just annihilate them with volume. So um, tempo high bar squat Hands down, probably one of my favorite uh, exercises for fixing this. All right guys, moving on to secondary exercises, leg extensions, that's gonna be the first one. Single joint movement, obviously not something that's gonna have a lot of carryover to the squat, but like I said, if you have weak quads, you definitely wanna train them. Leg extensions are a great, great way to do that. I love these for really, really high reps, even as high as 30. Um, there's some data showing, or there's a lot of data showing that if you go to muscular failure, the rep range really doesn't matter too much for growing uh, your muscles. And it also kind of alleviates any kind of joint pains and, and things like that people are dealing with. A lot of time people can't do leg extensions without getting pain. So high reps or doing these occluded are a great way. You can also do them for like sets of 10 or 12. Probably want to go below 10 though. Um, great way to hammer out the quads, pretty obvious. On to the next one, belted squats. This is something I discovered in like the last year. And holy shit, it's, it's so amazing because the, the belt is over your waist, there's no demand on your torso to, to force it to stay upright. It's just all leg and it's all quad. If you have a pit shark machine, kind of like Barbell Brigade does, use that. But if not, you can even just uh, kind of recreate this with a belted, um, like a pull-up belt or, or really anything, and just do a bunch of belted squats. These things feel amazing. You can annihilate your quads in a squatting movement pattern while removing pretty much every other muscle, kind of besides the, the glutes and hams a little bit. But I mean, you will feel this so much in your quads. Um, I would actually put this above leg extensions. It just ended up being written in here below it. That's probably the first one I would go to. Um, Last but not least, goblet squats. These are more for beginners, I would say, or females. Um, people who aren't squatting a lot of weights. Obviously, you can only hold uh, so much in that goblet squat position if you have dumbbells. It's not like you're gonna hold a 300 pound dumbbell up there if you're a really strong squatter. So people who are still early on in training, this one will be really good for you. Um, but I do actually do these myself sometimes, especially early on in a training cycle. I'll do them paused for sets of 15 and I'll just go really slow and control throughout the whole thing. Still get some good volume in on my quads. Again, it's almost like a front squat, so you're annihilating the quads and the thoracic muscles, uh, and it teaches really good uh, movement pattern to beginners. I really, really love goblet squats for beginners. Pretty much anyone who comes to me that's never squatted before, they're gonna have a back squat day and a goblet squat day, or like goblet squats sometime after the back squats. They're an amazing exercise. All right guys, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, go ahead, leave it down below. Um, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps out the videos, guys. If you do that, uh, share them with everyone. And if you guys have anything you wanna see in particular next as far as this series is concerned, go ahead and let me know. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.